Hi friends, now we will discuss on the topic refining of crude oil for liquid fuels production. So, in the last 2 3 classes, we have discussed on the petroleum and then how it is produced, its properties and characteristics and the different products which you can get through the refining also. Now, we will be discussing more about the refining part that how the crude oil is refined to get different products. What are the process steps and what are the reactors which are involved or the reaction steps which are involved for the production of the uh, different liquid products. So, the contents of this refinery flow sheet, desalting, atmospheric distillation, vacuum distillation and conversion processes. So, if we see the conventional flow sheet of petroleum crude refining, then it we see that the after taking the crude, it is to some extent processed at production site and then it is transported to refinery and then refinery performs some preliminary operation or pretreatment step, then it is sent to the atmospheric distillation column and then residue of the residual part of the atmospheric distillation column, it goes to vacuum distillation column for further recovery of liquids from it and then the residual part of the vacuum distillation column is further processed in the, as downstream upgradation or downstream processing and then uh, different heavy lube oil, bitumen, uh, syn gas or fuel oil etcetera are produced. Now, we will start from here the desalter the first step at the refinery. So, the main objective of the desalter is to remove the salts, sediments and water present in crude. Because we know this crude oil when it is getting into entry into the atmospheric distillation and fractionated into different fractions uh, in the products that is naphtha, gasoline, kerosene, gas oil etcetera. Here the salt concentration should be less than certain value that is 2.9 ppm, but here the crude which is produced in some cases has very high concentration of salt. So, that has to be removed. Now, we will see prior starting the discussion, we will see the quality of some Indian crude that, that means, what are the different fractions we can get from Indian crude. So, that is Bombay high, North Gujarat mix, Assam mix. We get gases 1.9 percent, 0 0.4 for North Gujarat mix and 2.4 for Assam mix. So, in general this is which is for LPG content is very high in Indian crude not less and SR that is vacuum residue part is also less in this case Bombay high and uh, Assam mix although it is higher for North Gujarat mix and it is comparable to Middle East crude that is 30.5. This gives us some idea that we can get different amount of product different products in different amount, but then if our requirement is specific say we need more diesel, but these crudes are having certain capacity if we turn 100 ton then it will give us 24 it is a 19.2 it is 26.6 say, but I need 50 ton. So, I have to convert other product into this specific one. So, that a conversion of this process of the products into the required part is also very important that we will discuss later. Now, we are coming to desalting part. So, desalting as you know the purpose of this process is to uh, the remove the undesirable impurities specifically the salts and water and some sediments also if it is available. And one or two step process is used for this purpose and uh, as I have mentioned that 2.9 ppm of salt is allowable in refinery in the distillation column 
but <coughs> in some cases it is having very high say 2 lakhs 50,000 ppm and normally it is 200 ppm. So, uh, it is very high quantity of salt. So, if we see the salt content in sea water it is 35,000 ppm whereas, in some crude it is having more than much more than this. So, the removal of salt is very essential for its further processing in the refinery and that is done in desalting step. And uh, how, what is the mechanism how it works? So, if we see the water is present in the crude either as a separate phase or it makes a water in oil emulsion. So, when it is available in separate phase it is easy to separate it can be simple gravity can also also separate it. So, gravity um, oil water separators or surge tanks or desalting vessels all those will easily separate this water, but water which is in emulsified form that is not very easy to separate and that emulsified water also contains the salt of the crude oil. So, our objective to remove that emulsified water along with the salt from the crude oil that is the desalting step. As I have discussed that salt is present in uh, the form of crystalline solids or soluble in the emulsified water. So, if we want to remove this salt, so one way we can if we are able to remove the, uh, the emulsified water then salt will come, but that salt which is in crystallized and as a solid form that cannot be removed for that we have to add some more water. So, water is added heat is applied so that the external or the solid salts can be dissolved in it and heat will also help to break the break the emulsion and the emulsified water along with the brine will also or the, the salts or the brine solution will come out from the crude. So, this is the principle of this the desalting step. So, how it is done? The initially salt separation takes place at the production site as I have mentioned that is the, the, the separate phase of the water can be separated easily then it is transported to the, the refinery site and then desalting takes place and water is added and then mixed uh, and uh, it is using mixing valve or static mixers to ensure a proper contact between the crude oil and the water and then passing it to a separating vessel where the separation of phases takes place water and oil phase. Then how much fresh water we will need that will obviously depend upon the salt content. Normally 3 to 10 percent is used and this salt content is also indirectly uh, assumed by its degree API or specific gravity. So, specific gravity also helps to decide how much salt how much water fresh water need to be added. So, once we are giving the fresh water then it will dissolve the solid salts and we need to break the emulsified droplets also. So, how we will do it some demulsifier are also added some chemicals can be added or heating can also work on it or some electricity can be applied. So, if we apply electric field then the, the circular layer which we saw, saw that brine droplets this brine droplets as shown here say water droplets in circle in the crude oil this is containing different types of molecules which is which is at the surface of it and it is giving a stability to this. So, we have to break this. So, now this positive and negative if charges which are available at the surface. Now, if we apply a positive and negative uh, field electric field by apply by using a positive and negative electrode then this will be oriented the positive and negative ions will be oriented and it will be the deformed 
the it will be deformed and rupture can also take place. If we apply very high voltage then this will rupture and small particles will form. So, that may be more stable. So, this is the phenomena which can take place in the crude related to emulsified water droplets. So, we are adding fresh water here and uh, this fresh water when we are adding this is not having that much of plus minus ions on it, but when it will be getting some time to be in contact and proper mixing will be there and then uh, we can there will be some coalescence the droplets which we are adding the fresh water droplets and emulsified water droplets can uh, can coalesce and it will it will settle. This is the mechanism for the removal of this and the mixing of this that will depend upon easy mixing of this will depend upon the rupturing of this emulsified layer. So, that emulsion the breaking of the emulsifying uh, droplets of the water in it and this application of electric field is used in the uh, in the desalting devices in the refinery and the factors which affect the performance of the desalting process are settling time. So, if we have one desalter, desalter is a um, horizontal vessels. So, the crude oil along with water flows horizontally and then applied uh, then voltage is applied electric electric field is generated. So, in this case the settling time of the crude in this the, the oil particles in this desalter then demulsifying injections how much demulsifiers we are adding how much heat we are adding then addition of fresh water how fresh water we are adding and effective mixing of oil and water. So, that two different phase the there will be transfer of salts from the uh, organic to aqueous phase and how many chemicals for breaking the emulsion we are using as well as electricity. The electricity will also help to break the emulsion. So, now if we see the settling time. So, if we consider the Stokes law region the settling time or settling velocity will be this one. So, now r is the radius of the droplets and del rho is the variation in the difference in the density of the liquid and water and your uh, and uh, the the oil page and then this eta is the viscosity of the oil page. So, now if we <coughs> want to get less residence time we have to get more <coughs> v more V we can get by increasing R the diameter of the droplets which is done by application of heat or by application of electric field. We can get the more del rho value. So, that more del rho value means rho 1 minus rho 2 that has to be increased. Rho is the oil phase and this is water phase. So, if we use more water so that the variation this difference will change. If we increase the temperature then also density of water will change and oil will change. So, that del rho will also change and viscosity will also change with the temperature. So, when maximizing the size of the polished water drops we can get electric field. So, electric field we are applying the particles are will come together the water water uh, droplets will come together it will be bigger one. So, it will settle quickly and maximizing the density difference between water droplets and oil phase by heating and fresh water addition just to have discussed and minimizing the viscosity of the oil phase less are this more the V. So, we will be getting less resistance time and more efficiency or more uh, performance of the desalting process, but how much electricity we will apply that will also guided by this formula f is equal to k into square d to the power 6 by s to the power 4. So, here f is equal to electrostatic force between two adjacent droplets and then e is the voltage gradient. So, how much gradient we are applying and k is the dielectric constant and d is the diameter of water droplets and s is uh, center to center distance between two adjacent droplets. So, these are the factors 
which decides uh, what will be the electrostatic force to adjacent droplets. Now, there is some critical voltage if we apply more voltage then the particles can be uh, emulsified water droplets can be uh, broken into smaller one and can be more more stable one. So, this critical voltage is given as this formula E c is equal to k into root of T by d when t is the surface tension this is the diameter of droplet. Now, we will see the desalting process. So, desalting as you know that this is a horizontal vessel where separation takes place. So, here we will be adding water fresh water and our crude oil. So, fresh water is added here it is going to this place and crude oil is coming here and de demulsifying agent is also added and we are giving proper mixing and then to valve and then it is separated. So, oil phase will go up low density and water phase will come from the bottom as the density is higher. So, this is the process for the desalting. Now, mixing, mixing valve we have used we have added here demulsifier agent, but some configuration is also there without the demulsifying agent the heat can also be working uh, we can, can also work as uh, heater emulsifier. So, this in this case undefined crude and process water enters into this gravity settler and it where electric field is sub applied where electric field is applied. So, we are uh, in some case we are using the demulsifying agent in some case electric field is applied and in in reality electric field is applied and it has more efficiency for the separation of the salts from the crude oil. So, we will get desalted crude and we will get effluent water. The typical operating conditions of desalting units is temperature around 120 degree centigrade to 130 degree centigrade and it will depend upon as I have mentioned that depend upon the API gravity of the crude. So, here it is shown crude API gravity increasing. So, we are having higher temperature and pressure is around 2 to 3 kg per centimeter square above bubble pressure to prevent uh, vaporization. Typical residence time is 20 to 30 minutes that is dictated by electrode area and mixing valve typical pressure drop is 1.07 to 0 0.05 kg per centimeter square and wash water addition is around 4 to 6 percent somewhere it is 10 to 7 percent also mentioned. And there may be single step or two step process. So, if the salt content is less we can go for single step if it is more then we can go for double step if we want to get more purity we can go for double step. For example, for single step you see crude storage then it is we are taking it to preheat exchanger and we are adding fresh water along with chemical injection. So, chemical injection fresh water and crude it is coming and heated and it is mixed then desalting. So, desalting oil phase and water phase. So, brine to dispose and this water we are using and then we are using for uh, fractionation in atmospheric distillation column the single step desalting process. Here we can get around 95 percent of salt removal and while the concentration is also less we can go for it and high concentration we can go for two step to get more uh, cleaning of the salt pore removal of the salt from it and uh, in this case the water which is added in the first step is coming out from the water generated in the second step. So, that is used here and then in the first step we are getting water. So, this water we are taking some as a disposal and some part we are using here also and uh, then in the second part it is coming the well part from the first desalter it is going to second desalter for further removal of the salts from it and we also add fresh water. So, this water is again going there and some part is going to this part. So, that way we are getting the removal of the salts from the crude oil with the water and after heating 
it comes here to atmospheric distillation. So, this is two step process for desalting. Next we are coming to atmospheric distillation unit. So, atmospheric distillation unit this here the fractionation takes place. So, vapors are formed at higher temperature then it goes up and then condensation takes place then the vapor condensed and it is it comes here. So, we will get a liquid product and here also in, in, in between we can also get different other products and then pump around is used to get the more purity of this product different fractions and this is the after desalting crude is coming here and normally atmospheric distillation is a very large vertical steel cylindrical column with diameter of around say 65 centimeter to 11 meter and height up to 60 meter. And here normally we are having say 40 to 50 actual trays in it and we have 2 to 3 trays that is some pump around and uh, temperature here 8 to 10 degree above water dew point that is 120 to 130 degree centigrade typical and flush zone below cracking temperature that is 350 to 380 degree centigrade here 350 to 380 degree centigrade and here it is 120 130 degree centigrade and pressure drop we get here pressure drop in condenser 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 kg per centimeter square and per tray there is some pressure drop that is equal to 0 0.08 to 0 0.1 kg per centimeter square. And in this process we get different uh, products and those products are LPG, light naphtha, heavy naphtha, aviation, turbine fuel, kerosene, light gas oil and heavy gas oil that is your high speed diesel and then atmospheric residue. We will see now some properties of this different fractions. So, LPG obviously most important is your uh, vapor pressure that is 16.87 kg per centimeter square and volatility evaporation temperature for 95 percent volume at 760 millimeter mercury mercury level. So, this is the pressure and at uh, this we will be having 95 percent of the uh, LPG in vapor form at 2 degree centigrade and gasoline we get uh, recovered up to 70 degrees 10 to 40, 40 percent that we discussed that this is not a single compound it is a mixture of compounds. So, if we heat and the vapor which is formed if we cool it down then up to 70 degree we will be getting 10 to 40 percent in liquid and then up to 100 percent we will be getting 30 to 65 percent and up to 180 degree we will be getting 80 percent minimum. So, this is the gasoline property and final boiling point is 215 degree centigrade and red vapor pressure at 38 degrees 35 to 70 kilo Pascal per centimeter square. Similarly, the ATF has its own characteristics, aromatics how much it is present then distillation again say 10 percent 205 degree centigrade and final boiling point is 300 degree centigrade. It has some smoke point that is 26 millimeter that is minimum. Mox point means uh, when it is burned uh, if we uh, sorry if we apply heat then the fuel will produce uh, produce uh, smokes and what is the length of this this height smoke height that is called as the smoke point. So, freezing point is minus 47 degree centigrade maximum plus point 38 degree centigrade that is minimum and then RVP is 35 to 70 kg kilo Pascal per centimeter square. So, for similarly for kerosene we are having uh, volume percentage below 200 degree 200 degree centigrade is 20 final boiling point 300 degree centigrade and flash point 35 degree centigrade minimum and smoke point 18 millimeter minimum sulfur is 0 0.25 weight percent. High speed diesel it also has some this 90 percent volume should come at 366 degree centigrade and flash point is 32 degree sulfur is 0 0.25 percent and CTN number is 45 and these are the revised data and fuel oil we have some sulfur content high sulfur viscosity is also higher in this case and flash point is also higher in this case. Now, if we think about the design variables for the uh, for the atmospheric distillation column 
Surface plate crystallization column and and desulter both are considered simultaneously. So, desulter temperature and pre flash, then heater outlet temperature and flash zone temperature, over flash, and then column and flash zone pressure and type of condenser, whatever condenser we are using for cooling the the vapor and to get in get it into condensed form and that also influence the uh, the performance and it is also design parameter and location and number of pump arounds and stripping of stream and number of trays, how many trays are used that is also important design consideration. Next we are coming to vacuum distillation. So, after atmospheric distillation, so after 370 degree centigrade the residual part we, we need to process in a vacuum distillation. So, in this case we create some vacuum that is a 10 to 40 millimeter mercury absolute pressure is maintained in this case. So, once the vacuum is created, so at lower temperature also more than 370 degree centigrade the some some compounds from the residue atmospheric residue will be vaporized. As the pressure is less or vacuum is created, so more volume will be available. So, the size of this type of uh, column is generally bigger and diameter is more that is say 15 meters or more and height is also say around 50 meter. And in this case we see we, we need to maintain a pressure gradient from the top at the to bottom. So, they are less pressure and they are higher pressure that gradient is also maintained and uh, here also the packed bed is preferably used in this case because most of the column uses packing material for the vapor liquid contacting because such packing has a lower pressure drop than distillation trays. So, here it is coming here. So, we are getting some time and then different products we are getting LVGO and uh, HVGO heavy gas oil and light gas oil vacuum obtained from the vacuum uh, distillation column. So, we have gas oil now we are having LVGO and we are having HVGO and then residual part we will get from the vacuum distillation unit that can be further upgraded. And VDU design issues are like say preheat train say heater outlet temperature then flash zone temperature type of column or pressure type of vacuum and then steam rates and then type of internals top temperature number of location of pump around here also just like this just like atmospheric distillations we can use some pump around and ejector versus vacuum pumps or uh, combination. So, how the vacuum has been created as a steam ejector or vacuum pump. So, that also uh, a matter of consideration for its design and this VDU vacuum distillation unit can produce feedstock for FCC or can produce feedstock for lube plant. So, that way it can be fuel based and lube based process. So, for fuel base the products are diesel, light vacuum gas oil, heavy vacuum gas oil, slope distillates and vacuum residue whereas, for lube base the products are spindle oil, light neutral, intermediate neutral, heavy neutral and vacuum residue. Now, we have discussed how the crude oil is pre or desalted and then it is passed through the atmospheric distillation and get different uh, liquid products from it and the residue from the atmospheric distillation is further uh, distilled in the vacuum distillation column and we get different products LVGO, HVGO and, and the residue. Now, we have also mentioned that the specific need may be uh, different at different country of a particular product and, uh, and, and accordingly the refinery may not give us the liquid product in the same ratio. So, we need to convert the one type of product to other one to meet the requirement as well as to meet the quality of the product. So, to improve the quality of the product as well as to meet the specific requirement of a certain product we need to convert one product to other. So, here different operations are used those are called uh, conversion processes in the refinery and those conversion processes are some examples are catalytic. FCC process, hydrotating process, etcetera, 
and apart from this alkylation reforming process uh, all uh, polymerization process are also used in some cases to achieve the target to fulfill the requirement as well as the quality of different products. So, this way uh, the crude oil is converted to different usable forms and up to this in this class thank you very much for your patience.